personally, I live here because I really want to. While I could live in an apartment or a townhome, I have two dogs and that really wouldn't work for my animals. I can let them run out in the yard when they want to. I don't have to worry about my neighbor right on the other side of the wall um, getting all stressed out because my dogs are being noisy, running back and forth. And while they're small, they still can make a lot of noise. I just like living in an area that I have control over. I can do what I want to with my home. And I choose to live here. The residents of three manufactured home park communities in Minnesota have made a choice that has changed their lives. They have purchased their park land and formed a cooperative. They have taken control of their future and gained a sense of pride and security. Clearly the situation most people are in in manufactured home parks is a very vulnerable situation. It's an, it's an odd um, one, they, they don't control some of the basic things that, that any other homeowner would take for granted. And it's hard to think of if you live in a regular stick-built house that you would pour all this money into a house but somebody else would own the land underneath and could tell you to move anytime they wanted or to do this or do that or don't do build that or paint your house. The risk of not joining the co-op and the risk of not taking over the ownership of the park are that residents of the park are still susceptible to the park closing. They're then then the park owner can raise the rents, the park owner can decide to close the park, uh, the park owner can do whatever he or she wants to do because they own the park. Our owner that we had before wasn't a bad owner. Um, he didn't, you know, harass anyone, but he also wasn't a real caring owner. He didn't put a lot he, well, he basically, he didn't put anything back into the park. He collected the lot rent, and if it absolutely had to be fixed, we would fix, you know, he would fix it. But generally, if something didn't, wasn't an absolute necessity to be fixed, he, it wasn't fixed. The management doesn't take an active role in uh, the, the running and operation of the park. Um, they're really only there just to collect rent, and they don't do anything else. If you have a complaint, there's no one to call. If you have a service issue, there's really no one to call. Um, you feel like you're alone and by yourself when it comes to having any issues. And uh, where the co-op steps in is, uh, you know, uh, coming together and working together. There's been a stabilization of rent and the infrastructure. Um, the general sense of improvement has, has occurred throughout the co-op since it's become a cooperative. Some of the improvements that we've done around here is the paving of the roads, a new playground, um, and the surfacing in the playground for the kids. Used to be we wouldn't play there because there were burrs and stuff was broken and falling apart. The mailboxes, it really made a difference because um, otherwise it was broken down individual mailboxes down a row and it looked tacky, <laughs> but now we look like we care. <laughs> we have something good quality. When I talk to city officials, they're always expressing how impressed they are that Paul Revere is trying so very hard to make this work and, and to change our reputation. And so they're always now more apt to give us a hand and, and help us wherever they can. For instance, we just found out that they are going to be trying to put in better um, fire hydrants in here because our well can't support it. So they're going to bring in lines and, and make sure that our, our safety is first. North Country Cooperative Development Fund, or NCDF, has been instrumental in developing cooperative communities. They have provided funding, organizational and financial guidance, and support to homeowners as they work towards taking control of their communities. A co-op is an organization that's owned and controlled by the people who benefit from it. That's the most basic definition of a co-op. Um, it's democratically owned and democratically governed. So the members of the co-op, um, one person, one vote, they elect a board to carry out the affairs of the co-op. So when a cooperative takes over the ownership of a park, they're, they're taking on a business enterprise and, um, and they have to pay you know, particular attention to the uh, the financing of that business enterprise and uh, it's very important for everybody in the park to do what's expected of them. Our biggest challenge at the beginning of the process of trying to get the money for the co-op was that a lot of residents 
thought that the price for the park was just a little bit outrageous. And so getting everyone on board at the beginning was, was probably one of our, our, our biggest hurdles. And once everyone got into the agreement that, oh, it was land, it was going to be our land, um, and they understood that we were going to own it as a community, they, they came together. All of the costs associated with running the business of operating a manufactured home park now are the responsibility of the cooperative. And the board of directors is uh, charged with making sure that that business runs properly. And the board is subject to the ruling of the uh, co-op members, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so it's all supposed to be a democratic process. I uh, am a board member, I guess, because I asked for it. Probably not knowing what I was letting myself in for. It has taken quite a bit of my time, some work. But of course, on the other side of the picture, I I'm on top of what's going on around here, and uh, hopefully I'm helping to make this thing come about. Well, some of the main questions that I had were uh, if, well, basically, if how much say we would have in things, and who would be running it, because I know that a lot of our residents don't have management-type experience, and it was a little bit... Uh, a little bit concerning that uh, of who would be in charge and how it would be run. Uh, one th the thing that's important to know at co-ops is, is they aren't easy to do. It's not, um, I mean, you have uh, a cooperative board, the members, the people who live there, the residents, they have, they have rights that they get as owners, but they also have responsibilities. A lot of affordable housing is, is um, non-profit owned and there's, there's an owner and it's rental housing and somebody takes care of stuff for you if you're a resident, but it's not the same as taking care of them for yourself. And so, and I think we can all think of places in our lives where we do things for ourselves, and it's a, little, it's a little bit harder, but at the end of the day, you build some skills and you feel proud of yourself, and it, it feels real different to do something for yourself than to have somebody do it for you. And that part of our job is to support them in that and to, um, to help them do that and to give them skills and training that will help them um, work, you know, work better together and make good decisions together. That's really one of the big objectives, I think, of co-ops um, boards is you want to make good decisions together, make good decisions for everybody and make those decisions together. Some of the things that we were really glad that NCDF came in and did for us was the governance, the financial aspect, and the technical training because any one of us in the co-op knew that we couldn't do it. We didn't have the resources or we weren't sure where to begin putting something like this together so it wouldn't have happened without an organization such as NCDF. Well, I'm thankful to NCDF uh, feeling like they kind of made this deal happen for us um, without a connection and, and a, a liaison like NCDF uh, we weren't able to move forward and they kind of made things happen for us and although uh, Ultimately, the residents, you know, joined together and created this cooperative. It was through the guidance of NCDF that we were able to make that happen. Without that, we wouldn't have been able to have made this happen. If, if there would be a community that's looking at becoming a cooperative, I'd say go, do it, push into it, get help um, so that you know you're not alone. But if you have the NCDF type people, they will be able to give you the support and encouragement that's needed. And in time, it'll be worth the, the building and the development to get there. Because you'll have a better neighborhood on a lot of levels. It'll look better, the relationships will be better, um, and the reputation in the community will be something that you can be proud of being a part of. A cooperative is a place where democracy shines. Cooperatives offer economic opportunities and invaluable social benefits that are both meaningful and plentiful. Part of the thing is that these people are taking this on themselves. They're, they've already bought their house. They've already established themselves as a contributing member of society and of their community. And, and to take it one step further and to put them into a, an ownership situation is a, is a great plan. And it's going to preserve affordable housing get a, a safe cooperative for uh, management by ourselves here in this 
place to live, that's what, that's what is great because uh, the people can get their own decision about the rules of the park. By being a member owner, I have more of a say of what happens, not only with, you know, kind of the lot I'm on, but also the community, what infrastructure things are going to happen. If there's going to be a new rule change, I get to vote on that. Um, just, there's a lot more that I can really be involved in. That's what I'm really looking forward to, so where everybody, you know, waves at each other and everything. And that's my main goal right now, is try to get this community real tight so everybody knows and, and, and know that be real neighborly and everything so we can talk, have cookouts, whatever, be like a big old family. I'd like to make a comment about a friend I have that's um, in real estate and he keeps wanting me to buy a house somewhere. And, and we were talking about, remember the old days when we would sit on our steps and watch the traffic go by and the neighbors would yell across the street to each other and, and now houses are made so it's the garage in the front. And I looked at him and I said, you remember those days? I said, well, you know, where we're at in our co-op, we know each other, we say hi to each other. If somebody's raking the yard, we'll go and talk to them. And I said how I know the names of everybody in my area. And he looked at me and he said, oh, you've got something better than I have. <laughs>